Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 2 of Season 3 of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory Road. Where today we're here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. And if you guys did start the episode that went out yesterday, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. The start of Season 3, this is the, uh, this is the year sorry, where we aim to try and win the Drivers' World Championship. And as you can see there from the results from Round 1, we are, we are doing fairly well after the opening race of the season. We do still have an extra upgrade, hopefully going on the car very soon. In terms of the powertrain, but obviously coming into this Grand Prix weekend, we are now just trying to farm up those R&D points, upgrade this car as much as possible. You know, the aim is to win the drivers and constructors, and with Lance Stroll's AI being ever so slightly underpowered, I probably do need to make sure the car is comfortably quicker than everyone else. And obviously, for all of you guys that are aware, you know, I, I do I don't do this thing for the script. I do it to try and win races and ultimately things like that. So yeah, we are we are gonna you know if we've got an opportunity to make the car even quicker, we will be taking it. No matter what, the yeah, free practice as per normal was a fairly sort of simple showing, ready for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We've taken quite a few R&D points from that session. Obviously, that is absolutely what we wanted from this Grand Prix weekend. You know, basically season three, we shouldn't really be having too many sort of off sessions or anything like that. You know, we are aiming to be world champion. We should be able to, able to get fairly consistent results from all the sessions. There takes us now up to just over 400 R&D points as we come through the rest of this Bahrain Grand Prix weekend, and obviously hoping that we can continue on to try and get more and more upgrades on the car throughout the entirety of this season. But yeah, let's move on then into the Bahrain Grand Prix. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Hopefully, usually Bahrain's not a track that I'm particularly good at, but hopefully this season it can be ever so slightly different. Curtain rises once more then on the desert stage of Sakir as the players take their places for the opening act. Will they enthrall us like they did in 2014 with that titanic battle between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton? Well, we'll find out shortly as we get underway here in Bahrain. We'll be racing around 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit today with 15 corners and two DRS zones into turns one and turn 11. That should create some good passing opportunities. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left down into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about the Professor. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position, with Daniel Ricciardo slotting in alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Stroll, Perez, Charles Leclerc and Bottas, Vettel, The Professor, Ocon and Carlos Sainz, Verstappen, Holkenberg, Fernando Alonso and Van Dorn, Ericsson, Gasly, Lewis Hamilton and Roman Grosjean, Magnussen and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. So here we are then on the grid, ready for the Bahrain Grand Prix, and the AI are very, very quick around here in terms of qualifying. But obviously I've done AOR around here as well. I know the race strategy should be a one-stop, you know, from the super softs all the way on to a set of the medium compound tyres here. Unfortunately, for some reason, I don't know why I decided to put it on softs, but yeah, we will be aiming to go for a super soft at the two medium Grand Prix today. But yeah, starting a little bit lower than I would have liked down in P8, as I said, the AI very OP in qualifying. But here we are then on the grid, it is five lights, and it is lights out, and away we go. That also a fairly mediocre start, and we are gonna be able to keep just about side by side with Seb as we come in towards Tel 1 there, and now break it down in towards the first corner. We do need to be a bit aggressive here as we come down in towards Team 1. They get the inside of the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas. There. He still had Seb on his inside. It was very lucky to be on the outside. He didn't actually take him out in that little incident there. But now all over the back of Charlotte. Claire. He's going to go defensive up towards Turn 4 there. Around the outside of the Sauber driver we go there. I think he, yeah, he's got to back out just behind me there. So we, I said we had to be aggressive off the start. We've now made up three places in the opening sector of this race. All over the back now of Sergio Perez here. We're going to send it down the inside in towards the head. And they're a very, very sort of late lunge that almost ran to the back of Kimi Raikkonen there. But we do get the traction 
on the exit there. Sergio tried to go for a bit of a switchback move, but not able to make that work. So certainly a very, very successful start to this Grand Prix there. Eighth up to P4 there, and that is exactly what we needed in this race. And next up on the old hit list is a reigning world champion, double world champion, obviously Kimi Raikkonen here. As we come now onto lap two here, you can see he actually makes a big mistake there, locking up in towards town four there, and that's going to be able to get both myself and Lance Schroner up past him. Now we're both on the podium as well there. So Lance clearly showing a little bit of better form after the very, very rough Australian Grand Prix there. But Daniel Ricciardo was already trying to sprint away at the head of the field there. It's certainly looking like the Red Bull has got quite a lot of pace around this circuit as well. So yeah, hopefully we can try and pile on the pressure on my teammate Lance and just see what strategy uh, Daniel Ricciardo is trying to go for in this Grand Prix as well. Now, on to the end though of lap three, we've now really started to pile on the pressure on my Williams teammate here. We might be able to try and look around the outside or maybe up the inside in towards the final corner here. Use all the air modes that we possibly can there. Try to save as we come in towards the final corner there. Lance runs a little bit deep through the corner and we'll be able to get the traction on the exit there. And now up into P2 of this Bahrain Grand Prix. So what a start to the race. This is really good. Just able to slice my way throughout the order so far there. But Lance is not just done with this fight just yet. Here he is. Obviously going to be very, very close as we come in towards the one there. Unfortunately, I just cannot get the car slowed down quite as much as I would have liked them. Running a little bit wide on the exit there. Get a bit too much wheel spin on the exit of the corner there. And now Lance is going to get a slingshot move right around the outside. That was incredible traction by my teammate there. We'll still be on the inside there as we come now up in towards turn four here. Side by side as we come into sector two. Almost like the seed is battling all the way back in 2014. But Lance does get the traction on the exit of the corner there. And does then re-hold on to P2 in this race. We're trying to look to the outside there. A little bit of contact made up between the powers there. Kimi Raikkonen tries to get down the inside, but we do get the better traction with the straighter run on the exit of the corner there. Try to squeeze them out wide there. A little bit of wheel to wheel contact made up between the power and there. But we do hold on to P3 here. So really just going to show how well the AI can really battle in F1 2018. You can just see on the minimap how big a lead Daniel Ricciardo already has from all this battling here. You can see coming out on towards the final couple of corners of this lap. And once again, we're now piling on the pressure Oh, my teammate Lance Stroll here. Are we going to be able to look? He does go defensive in towards the final corner there. We are going to go for any sort of diving move this time around. He doesn't get a, such a bad run through that final corner as he did last lap. But he will actually dive it into the pit lane there. So we're going to try and get as much slipstream as we possibly can there. But yeah, Lance now in the pit lane as well. As I know Daniel Ricciardo hasn't quite dived into the pit lane here. So he is going to try and go a little bit longer in this race as well. But yeah, very, very interesting to see how early the AI really trying to pit in this race. By lap nine though. We were almost ready for our one, and hopefully when we stop off this Grand Prix, we have Valtteri Bottas piling on the pressure on that set of the soft compound tyres here. It looks like he is going to send it down the inside through the final corner there. Verstappen as well is on a set of the soft, so they should really be able to quite comfortably make this one-stop Grand Prix work there. We're just going to get the car slowed down nice and quickly on the marks there. We now are going to drop back down the order here. I'd imagine Lance is probably going to be able to go for a bit of an undercut on me, but obviously he will pretty much guaranteed have to pit for another time in this Grand Prix though. So we come out of the pit lane. Danny Rick's already flown past, but he's on a set of the soft compound tyres here. So that has not been the ideal race strategy for Danny Rick there. Almost flashbacks to Seb. Last time out there where he made a very, very bot strategy call on the hob. And now back out in this race, we are behind Esteban Ocon here. So now we really need to try and slice our way back through these slower cars in this race. So obviously Force India though currently lead the way in the Constructors World Championship after the opening round. Just one point ahead of Red Bull and just two points ahead of ourselves over at Williams. Obviously hoping we can try and get back past them in this race there. Use the Citroen, the DRS, the overtake mode and the Rick Drive Series to come on the long run towards come on. Even more drivers now opting to make either their first or second pit stop of this race straight to the outside of Esteban Ocon. You can see Bottas has actually gone out on a set of super soft tyres there. So Bottas as well trying to make the super soft strategy work there. Not really too sure. What he is thinking with that one there. Well, we do make the move work on Esteban Ocon. He's going to try to look back past me as we come in towards this second set here. We're going to squeeze him out over the curbs, hold it right around the outside, and we do now move up into P9 of this race once more here. So overall, that has been a fairly successful middle run there of this race. Perez, Reichen, and Danny Rick, though, have all now pit on with 12 laps to go of this race. So Danny Rick there making his second pit stop of the day. He is really now going to be just hunting me down through the latter stages of this Grand Prix. And then one lap later, on to the end though of lap 17, the other four drivers that were ahead of me, Bottas, Leclerc, Vettel, and my teammate Lance Stroll, and they all dived into the pits. And we've got 11 laps now, just to try and hold on in this Williams car here. Just see what we can manage. We've got still Nico Hulkenberg trying to pile on the pressure here, but he'll be able to dive into the pit lane once more in this Grand Prix very, very soon. As you can see, 
on the minimap. Max Verstappen now has popped out in a net P2 of the Grand Prix. And by lap 23, he was looking like the one that would be able to challenge me for the race victory. You can see the gap now down to just 2.1 seconds between the pairs there. And one lap later, he was really taking time at me. The gap now down to just one and a half seconds there. And by the time you got onto lap 27 of this race, uh, Max Verstappen there was really, really looking like he was going to be able to try and pile on the pressure. On towards lap 27 we go. He's going to be on the outsider, but the Red Bull just has absolutely nothing down the straights here. He's got the DRS and everything else, but he just is barely able to pull alongside me there. He does get quite a good braking run in towards turn one there, but on the inside for turn two, they really just get pinched out. He runs me a little bit wide over the curves there, which is basically going to equalise the runs on the exit of the corner here, but Verstappen, we all know he is a fighter. He is not going to give up on these places here, and as we come in towards sector two, he just does not go for the move just yet there. And one lap later, we are still trying to just soak up the pressure here. Races like this really do define a world championship drive. As you can see, Max Verstappen and now Danny Rick are all piling on the pressure here, so we will have a three-car battle as we head into the final lap of this race. Is Max Verstappen going to be able to get the run around the outside? He does break once again, very, very late on the outside there. We're going to give him the room on the exit of the corner. Once again, he gets squeezed out over the curbs where he will drop back out into P2 of this race. And now Danny Rick looks like he's going to be able to pile on the pressure on his teammate there as we come down in towards this next braking zone there. It looks like, yeah, they are still trying to fight between the pair of them there. And what they really need to do is try and always go for a bit of a BTCC. Run me wide and let both of them through here. Because obviously we are massive rivals in the Constructors World Championship as well here as we come now through in towards Sector 2 once more. Are we going to be able to hold on to this win? You know, the second win in a row in the 2020 season as we come now down in towards the, in towards the horrible breaking zone. Now onto the back straight. This is going to be another golden opportunity where the Red Bulls are really, really going to be able to close up against myself. Quite interesting, you know, that Red Bull and Williams, two now very aerodynamic based cars, but still really have pace around what is quite usually an already a power orientated circuit. That is the Bahrain Grand Prix circuit. But in towards the final sector we go now. The gap is still just four and a half tenths of a second at two Verstappen there. He is perfectly placed between myself and Daniel Ricciardo there. In towards the final corner though, he just isn't going to have enough. The Red Bull just not quick enough down the straights and through the final corner. It is going to be a huge, huge tank slapper on the way out there. But we are going to hold on for the win here in Bahrain. What a race. That has been there and just about able to soak up the pressure right towards the very end because I really don't feel we would have been able to hold on for much longer. A great win then for the Williams team today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones, and ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? And I can see our drivers making their way out now. It's been a sublime team performance, and it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Williams are your winners today. So there we are then, the end of the Bahrain Grand Prix, and what a certainly very, very exciting race that got towards the end. Three cars fighting for the race victory there, but we were able to hold on just one-tenth clear of Max Verstappen for the race victory there. Danny Rick, less than half a second off the race victory as well. They're probably a little bit heartbreak for both of the Red Bull drivers there. Raikkonen and Bottas, though, even on those weird two-stop strategies, were still able to make it work ahead of Seb Lance. Charles Leclerc, Lewis Hamilton... And Esteban Ocon round out the point scorers there with Nico Hulkenberg, Carlos, uh, sorry, Marcus Ericsson, Carlos Sainz, and Roman Grosjean just missing out. A 43 minute 52 race time there is very, very quick as well. With Pierre Gasly, Brendan Hartley, and both McLarens both not making it through to the end of the race there. Very, very unfortunate for the McLaren drivers there. Finished off, well, they don't finish, but they are still behind the Toro Rosses there. Down right at the rear of the field there. In terms of the driver standings, obviously, we still lead the way 17 points clear now of Danny Rick there. With Verstappen now moving up to third. Seb now up to fourth. Sergio Perez dropping back down after a bit of a rough race out there. Bottas and Raikkonen both jumping. Ocon and Sainz. Uh, Lance and Charles Leclerc both jumping. Hulkenberg there. Alonso 
getting jumped by Lewis Hamilton. I never thought I'd see the day where Lewis Hamilton would be just on two points after the opening two rounds of the season. Flashbacks to 2009 on the whole of, yeah, 14th and down. Do not have any points yet. So that means Alonso, K-Mag, Ericsson, Grosjean, Gasly, Brendan Hartley, and uh, Stoffel van Dorn is yet to make it through to the end of a Grand Prix in Season 3 of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory career mode. In terms, though, of the constructors, if I'm not mistaken, Red Bull will now have a three-point lead over Williams there. I've I've got ten times the points of my teammate there. Yeah, uh, Red Bull lead the way by three points over us. Ferrari jump force India as well. That's sort of fall from grace. That has been only able to take a one point from that Grand Prix with Mercedes in 5th, Renault down in P6 there with Sauer 7th, McLaren, Haas and Toro Rosso all yet to score after that Grand Prix there. But yeah, hopefully you know you guys have enjoyed this video. If you're new around here as well and you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so if you want to see more of the F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory career mode. Obviously this is the year where hopefully we can finally try and win the Drivers World Championship. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to go check out my league racing channel, click on the orange link on your screens right now. If you want to go check out my Forza Horizon 4 channel as well, click on the green link on your screens. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys next time for the Chinese Grand Prix.